Today, we're gonna to be answering that age-old question. Is the Bob Ross mixing palette really worth it? We're gonna go over what's good, what's bad, and is it worth your money to buy a Bob Ross mixing palette? Well, let's find out. Hey, what's up? Wild here to make sure you become bigger and better with your painting adventures. If this is your first time here and need a little help with how-tos, tips or tricks, painting tutorials, or yeah, even product reviews like in this video right here, do me a favor and hit that big red subscribe button down below and tick that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. So what makes me an expert on the Bob Ross mixing palette? Well, I own three of them, which lets me know everything good and bad about these mixing palettes that I wanna share with you before you dive into buying one. The Bob Ross mixing palette is 24 inches long and 16 inches wide at the handle and 12.5 inches wide at the tail. It is made of clear acrylic plastic and ranges in price from about 30 USD to 40 USD. And that's it. That's all the information you need to know about the spec. So what is good about this mixing palette? The number one thing you're gonna notice about this mixing palette here is how wide it is. It's one of the widest mixing palettes that I've found on any painting website or Amazon. You get this huge wide space, which is perfect if you're a landscape painter, because you're gonna be going through a multitude of colors. Even better if you're a wet and wet painter, because you're gonna be doing a lot of mixing and blending, yeah, still on your mixing palette, which is why I really like it. Now, if you're wondering why mine is different when it doesn't look like the uh, clear one right here, it's because I customized mine. If you're interested on how I did that, I'm gonna put you a card in the top corner there that'll take you through it, which I recommend doing if you buy this. I really love the handle on this mixing palette. It gives you a few extra inches, and as ladies will tell you, every inch counts. On most mixing palettes, you're gonna see how the handle is kinda cut off, and that's fine. A lot of people like that because they like the extra space for your hand. For me, I love the rail for one strong reason. If you're working on your painting and you're tapping things in or feathering it in, or kinda taking out a little bit of detail to add depth to your painting, and you get excess paint on your paintbrush, very easy just to tap it out right here and go back to your painting and go back and forth. Makes it very smooth and very seamless. When it comes to the handle in general, it's very comfortable for the thumb and fingers, your palm in general, and as it rests across your forearm there, feels very comfortable for left-handed and right-handed painters. The Bob Ross mixing palette is an easy to clean up mixing palette due to the fact that it's made out of that clear acrylic, which means it's non-porous, easy to wipe up and clean up. If you wanna know the best way to clean any mixing palette, did a video on that, I'm gonna put it in the top right corner. Make sure you check that video out, especially if you plan on buying this right here. Last good point I have to say about this mixing palette is since it's made out of that clear acrylic, it's very lightweight. So anybody can hold it and they won't feel fatigued for hours of painting on end. Well, that's all I have to say about the good sides. What are the bad sides about this mixing palette? Well, there's one big one. And I've seen this on tons of reviews of people that do this uh, mixing palette here. And it's kind of prone to crack. And I have one that is actually cracked right here at the thumb. Not sure if you guys can see that. I'll do a close up there for you. And uh, I've been seeing a lot of reviews of this recently about how the Bob Ross mixing palette, is it a good mixing palette? Cause it's prone to crack. So allow me to address why this is probably happening to you. Yeah, I think it can crack. Mine has cracked, but to be fair, I dropped mine on a rock while I was doing some outside painting. But I've had this one for close to five years now and I've never had a problem. So if you don't want yours to crack, there's a proper way to hold your Bob Ross mixing palette. First, make sure you don't have a death grip on the handle. If you're gonna add more tension, that's more tension on the plastic, which means it's gonna be more rigid, which means when you push on it, more prone to break. Number two is make sure your Bob Ross mixing palette is laying across the entire section of your forearm. That's gonna give it more area for it to rest on for when you're pushing, which means when you do that and you push with your paints and your paintbrush, you're not putting as much torque on the handle, which is where things are prone to break. So make sure you do those two steps. Also, you don't need to push the heck out of this thing. Get some nice movements in there and lightly tap in. If you have anything tougher you have to do, hey, this guardrail, like I said, is closer to the hand. You can go a lot harder here as opposed to up here, which is gonna put more torque on that handle. So that's the correct way you wanna use this mixing palette, which I feel like a lot of people don't do. They just go in there, they go at the far end, and they start hitting really, really hard, and it puts too much tension down here. No good. So I address the cracking issue. 
But there is one big problem in addition to the cracking issue. Now I can't find any information except what's on Amazon. It claims that this mixing palette of clear acrylic is a quarter inch thick. It is not, not even close. At closest, it's an eighth of an inch thick, which means, yeah, it can crack. And I will admit that it will crack if you don't treat this thing with love and care. And I feel like the Bob Ross company out there, whoever owns them, the Weber, I'm not sure who owns it, should technically make it a quarter inch, which means take two of these mixing pallets and it's gonna be so rigid that you can't damage it at all. Wouldn't cost much more in plastic just to create something this thick. And it would be awesome. If they could do this, this would be the best mixing pallet on the market. I mean, I can't even hurt this thing. It's so awesome because it's got that quarter inch of thickness. So what are my final thoughts on the Bob Ross mixing pellet? Do I think it's worth it? Yeah, you know, I actually do think it's worth it. Even with all the issues, if you use it the way I just explained, this thing will last years and years. Like I said, I've had this for like four to five years and I've never had a problem with it. Granted, mine's customized, which I recommend doing, but if you can buy this for on a sale price below like $30, I think it's way worth it. When it's around 35 to 40, it's a little bit of a toss up. It really depends on what kind of painter you are. If you're a wet on wet landscape painter, you wanna paint like Bob Ross, you are gonna need all this space. Trust me, you're gonna love mixing colors and having fun. If you're just a traditional acrylic or oil painter out there, hey, by the way, yeah, you can use this with acrylic paint, just make sure you clean it up right away. I would say probably go with a smaller mixing palette if you're worried about cracking yours because you're not gonna be able to put as much pressure or torque on it and you'll have a little bit more control of that mixing palette but I have not found a mixing palette that is better than the Bob Ross one because I love how wide it is. But if you guys wanna help me out in this, if this video did help you out with the review and anything like that, do me a favor and use the links down below. It costs you nothing. Every time you click through one of those and buy something, it really helps out my channel. If there's a product that you want me to review for painting wet on wet oil painting acrylics, hey, let me know. I'll be more than happy to see what I can do to make a video for you and give you my impressions to let you know if it's worth your money or not. I hope this video was super helpful for you. I'm gonna do you a favor and put a couple of videos over to the side that go over some more product reviews that should help you in your painting adventures. But until then, I will see all of you awesome people later. Take care, and of course, peace.